All right, thank you very much. I appreciate you guys coming out tonight. I'm going to do something a little bit different. If you guys have been coming here for a while, you know I just kind of run through things that we do at Renner's Warehouse. But instead what I want to do is, you've already heard that Rich is going to talk a little bit about the evolving rental market for 2020. And that should be a good topic. I've seen his presentation. He's got good information there. But before we start into that, I want to go back in time to 2002. 2002. So bear with me on this. I want to go back down, back into time of 2002, and I want to talk about this guy right here. You guys recognize that guy? A much younger and probably smarter and smarter version than myself, but yeah, that's me. So I want to talk about this guy in 2002 and make an illustration about what Rich is going to talk about. This is all real life. So who was this guy, right, in 2002? A 35-year-old guy, had a pretty good sales job on gas, had a couple little ones. Caitlin was just born. I was doing all right, right? Doing all right for my family in 2002, so why don't I just blow it up and buy a We Buy Ugly House franchise? Well, that's what I did. Actually, I didn't blow it up. It was the best thing I could have done. I'm still excited after 22 years of doing real estate, but I did buy a We Buy Ugly Houses franchise up in the Woodlands. And what I want to do is I want to talk about the first house I ever bought, and we didn't plan this. Rich actually said, oh, that first house is scary. I want to talk about the first house that I ever bought in 2002. Shaking in my boots, never bought real estate before other than a couple houses to live in. Knew nothing about uh, real estate investment at all. But this is the first house that I bought. So let's talk about it because I want to illustrate something. This is built in 79. Like I said, it's up in Humble. It's about 2,600 square foot home, four bedroom, two and a half bath, two story brick on a slab, almost an acre of land. Pretty good deal, right? So that's the first deal that I had an opportunity to purchase as a We Buy Ugly House and franchisee. And look at that. $160,000 ARV back in 2002. Did everybody know what ARV is? Oh. Yes, after repaired value. And so if you want to bring a lot of money to the table, yes. you should know the ARV. That's like the first thing, right? So after repaired value, it needed about 20,000 in repairs. And look what I bought it for. Bought it for $88,000. Woo! 68% loan to ATV value, right? After repaired value, ARV value. So where's Johnny? I was gonna ask him, there's Johnny. So Johnny, would you would Jet do that deal at 68%? 100% financing. 100% financing. You stole my thunder on the next slide. Now, I actually used hard money and look at that. Guess what I did? I didn't finance 88,000. I financed $95,200. And why did I finance $95,200? Close the cost. Damn straight. Why would you ever bring money to the table if you don't have to? So. I didn't bring any money table to buy a house that's worth 160,000 fixed up, 20,000 repairs, buy it for 88, finance the closing costs. Yes, I talk fast, but look at that, nobody down. Now, here's what I did with it. This is the unbelievable, you know, they talk about, you know, Murphy's Law or drug dealers giving out free samples. I don't know what it is, but look what I did. I spent $800 to have a crew come, trash it out, clean out all the, the closets and the drawers and everything else. Then we came in and we cleaned it, same company, 800 bucks. Mop, vacuum, shine the glass, clean the ceiling, blade fans. That still needed a lot of work, but it looked nice, right? And it was vacant. And I contracted it to sell in three weeks as is. Okay? Now, this was a retail buyer, obviously, with a little story about him that you need to know. The lady across the street, this was her son. He lived in California, and he was a contractor. He'd gotten divorced. He wanted to move back to Houston, and he was looking for a fixer-upper. And he didn't know what I paid for it. He's like, $125,000 for a $160,000 house all day long. So I sold it to him for $125,000. Now, it took a little longer for him to close, for him to get his money together. 60 days, that's a little longer than normal. But that, that's, this is no BS. Look at that right there. $25,720 on uh, June the 13th of 2020, uh, uh, 2002. LK Investments. Love my kids' investments. Right. So that's, that's what I made. So you guys are like, what? Does, does this sound like a great deal? Oh like, yeah, woo, yeah, first win, home run, right? I will say this, never done this before, I thought, this is easy. Why did I wait so long to get into real estate? I can make $25,000 in three weeks. No, you can't. No, it's again, they give you the free, the free sample so you come back. But, sounds like a good deal, right? Well, it was a great deal, but let's consider this, all right? Think about this. What if, ooh, what if I would have done the repairs now I've got a house worth 160 because I did 20,000 repairs to get the actual repair value, right? 
I have a $115,000 loan balance because that $20,000 of repairs get pushed back into the short-term loan that I have a company like Jet. What if I would have put it on a 20-year long-term note? And that would have been a refi. That's not a, that's not a new loan, right, Johnny? That's a semi to perm. Isn't that kind of like the semi to perm uh, jet lending uh, program that you guys have? semi to perm program? You have one like that, right? Yeah, so look at this. I was able to not only roll it into a 20, I could have, that's key, roll it into a 20 year note, but I could have upped it to 120,000 to cover my closing costs on the refi. How cool is that? Because it's a 75%, not 80. And again, no money out of my pocket to put on a long-term note. Now you guys are like, this is crazy. No, this is, this is just math, right? So what if I would have done that? This is the part that makes me just want to, whatever. 2002, I went back and looked. $1,500 to rent that little property. What I figure in is a 5% vacancy you know, uh, ratio. I got 3% for annual rent increase, which by the way is written into our leases, so I get that every year. $100 a month for repair allotment, right? Whether you use repairs or not. And I figured in $2,000 for property insurance and $2,000 for, for property taxes just as a wag. Now, so you know I'm not just pulling numbers out of my butt, there's our yield analysis spreadsheet that we use, right? So this actually came from something that I will not bore you with, but it's math. What if I would have done that, and what would happen today? Look at that. You're exactly right. It actually appreciated $154,000. And you know how I know that? Because in December of 2022, it sold for $314,000. I went and looked. So it appreciated $154,000. And guess what? What about the 20 years that I rented it out? And granted, there'd be vacancies. And I know being a landlord sucks. Been there, done that. But I would have cash flowed, and that's on my spreadsheet with all the stuff that I take in, including the maintenance, repairs, and vacancies. About $118,000 I would have cash flowed. So I would have cash flowed $118,000 over 20 years. It'd be worth $154,000. And then what's the big part about this? Today, right now, I wouldn't have a loan, right? It's 20 year note. Who paid off the loan? The renter. Not me. The renter did. That's exactly right. And guess what? Here's something we forget about. Values of houses go up. What happens to the rent? Does rent just stay the same over 20 years? Nope. I went and looked. That house would rent for $2,600 a month. And here's the big part, right, that I like to hit. What do I mean by most of the rent would go in my pocket now? Again, there's no loan, right? There's no mortgage. That's the majority of what comes out of your pocket and goes out of the rent. There's no, no mortgage now. I just got to pay my insurance and my taxes every month. So, I went to Texas Tech all the way through graduate school. I'm a big Red Raider. But I also say that there's something we call Texas Tech math, right? My Texas Tech math still says that $272,000 is better than 25720 right? I mean, now do you see why I'm just going? So, I just wanted to share that little story for you to just kind of show you as Rich talks about how great we think 2023 and even better 2024 is going to be as a landlord, and it's already pretty good down. Why you might want to hold property? Now, the other question is, okay, you told me all about holding property. How can you help? Well, here's the quick, you know, sell slide. Hey, we'll, we'll, we'll help you find a property. We do that too. We'll find you a tenant. We'll manage it for you. We'll collect the rent and we'll send you the money, right? That's just bread and butter. That's what we do leasing on the management side. But that's how we can help you out. So I hope, I hope that maybe I got you all excited about holding property. And now you know why I walk around after I, I just sold my 418th house. So you know why I walk around going, why didn't I hold every single house? Why didn't I hold every single house? But anyway, so let's do this. We are here to help you if you guys want to become landlords. We will take all that heavy lifting of finding tenants and even more importantly, those midnight calls because you know toilets only go out or plug up or pipes only burst at midnight on Saturday night. They don't do it at two o'clock on Thursday afternoon. It doesn't happen. So we're here to help you with that. Grab somebody in a pink shirt. I think we're the only ones in a pink shirt, which is good. You know, you can stop by, you can email us, you can go to our website, you can call us, you can carry your pigeon, I don't care, but come and find us, we want to help you out. That's my shtick, and now you know why I'm like, oh, I should have held everything. Thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe below.